Hey everyone, welcome to the Introduction to Human Design Masterclass. This is a free masterclass that I am offering in collaboration with Juni Wellness Centre. And I'm so excited to be here to be sharing this incredible system with you all. Um, if you're here, you are likely an absolute beginner with human design, i.e. you either have only just heard about it, you've probably looked at your chart and gone, oh my God, what the hell is that? <laughs> and being super overwhelmed because there's all these shapes and all these colors and all these lines and all these words that don't really make sense. Um, and this kind of masterclass is just to give you like a starting point with all of that because it can be very overwhelming. It can be like confusing. And if you don't have a point of call or like somewhere to go to that can explain, you know, the, the surface level stuff, it's very easy to just go, oh, yeah, it's another system. I'm just going to walk away and not, not do anything with it. And that would be a real shame because human design for me is really the only system that I've ever come up with that's really, like, encompassed all of me, which is a lot because we're all complex humans with a lot of different things going on and a lot of different gifts and a lot of different challenges and a lot of different, like, ideas and ways that we work. And it's the only system that hasn't, like, box me into you're an empath or you're an introvert or you're a um you know like a ENF what is it introvert that the my brings one the INFP or INFJ or whatever I am I don't know it changes every time um it's actually like and also then like astrology which is like you're I'm a Taurus and I'm like cool but that doesn't really tell me like it doesn't tell me enough or I have only scratched the surface with astrology but like it didn't tell me enough. It didn't, it didn't encompass all of who I am. And it didn't tell me enough about like the practicalities of life. And so I love human design because you can go so you can either just scratch the surface, which is what we're going to do today. But then like, there's so many layers, like you could study this for 40 or 50 years and still not learn anything. It goes into like, how you best take in information, how you digest the world around you how you show up best in the world how your energy works um even can go into like your health system so like how you um best consume food like is it in the dark is it in the is it in the light um do you need to can to digest like complex foods or simple foods and the same foods over and over again or do you all need always need variety um it tells you how you can manifest things it tells you do you need structure in your day or does the structure actually not work best for you like it tells you so many things and obviously like that's all very complex and very like in depth and today we're definitely not going to go into all of those depths we're definitely just like gonna handle the top level and we're going to talk about um the most important things um that you need to know about your unique chart so that you can then um you know, move through the world in a more sustainable way that is for you. Now, chances are some of you have just, you know, come here because you're burnt out or some of you have just heard about this randomly and something has piqued your interest. Some of you might have gone, ooh, which is also in your human design chart. Some of you might have gone, ooh, that sounds interesting, but I need to know more. Some of you might have gone, mm, I've been hearing about this in multiple different places and I feel like... Um, I'm like being led to it, but I don't really know where to start. This feels like an easy way to start. There's so many ways that you could be drawn into human design and that is perfect for you. And human design can actually explain why you were drawn into human design the way that you were, right? Um, this is why I love it. It's so good. There's no like indoctrination with human design. It's all about experimenting with life. So all of this information that you're going to take from me today and take from this webinar today, I want you to take it and try it and then see what happens when you do the opposite of what I say. That is the point of human design. It is like, it's called the science of life or the experimentation of life. And it's not about, this is what Nicola said, so therefore I must do it. I also didn't introduce myself. If you don't know me, I'm Nicola. I'm a 2-5 emotional projector. You'll learn more about me as the webinar goes on, I'm sure. But um, it's not an indoctrination. And this is also in my human design to just completely um, flip over the, <laughs> the service level stuff like self-introductions and go straight to the depth of um oh yeah cool Em's just putting her details of her chart in the comments if you're joining me live definitely do that um 
so that I can go a little bit in depth for you in this call. But yeah, it's definitely my desire to go straight into the nitty gritty, into the deep stuff and like give you all the information and like not really care about any of the surface level stuff. So forgive me if you need that, go and check out my website or, you know, come into my many free groups that I have. Um, actually, I have a human design one called Human Design with Nicola and it goes through even more in depth than what we're going to go through today. It is... Um, in the guide section has like all of the basic parts and you can just watch the videos on your parts that you find in your chart. So go and do that as well. If you want to know more about me, you'll learn definitely by just watching more and being more in my space. Um, so yeah, let's actually dive into some very basic things. I also just want to preface this by saying, and this like breaks all of the rules, right? All of the rules of being a business owner or all of the rules of being like a well-prepared webinar leader <laughs> or like meeting leader. I have not prepared anything. And this is in my human design chart too. I work best when I wing it. And I'm not like winging this, like obviously I'm like very embodied. I've been living my design for many years now. I've been obsessed with human design for so many years. I've been teaching it for um, probably over a year now too. So like I'm definitely not winging it. I know what I'm talking about, but at the same time, I have not prepared slides. I don't even know what I'm, what's going to come out of my mouth today. And this is how I work best. So I just want to give you and I want to explain to you that human design can do this for you. I want to give you permission to really step into the parts of you that you've been told not to be. I'm going to say that again. I'm giving you permission to step into the parts of you that you have been told not to be. So maybe it's that, yeah, M actually has the same thing. So we're both two lines in our profile. Next to profile, it's we have two in our profile. I'm a 2-5, M's a 6-2. It's the two line that gives you that um, ability to just wing it and never prepare. Not that you're never prepared, but like it's a very natural giving. It's a natural exchange that we like I always have. I put the wrong time of birth. Oh, yeah. Standard. <laughs> We've all been there. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, human design really allows you to like decondition. And what is conditioning, right? Conditioning is all of the times in your life and the combination of like the society that you were brought up in, the religion that you were brought up in, the parents that you had, the teachers that you had, like the combination of your entire life up until this point and how that has conditioned you to be a certain way. And human design, the point of human design really is to decondition, to be more of who you are um, according to like who you actually are designed to be at birth, right? Designed to be according to the I Ching, which is a Chinese philosophy, a um, the Kabbalah and astrology, right? It's human design draws upon all of those things. And I'm pretty sure it also draws upon the traditional chakra system. So it's a combination of all of these different um, ancient wisdoms and ancient systems. And it's like combine them all um, to give you kind of like a blueprint or a roadmap of who you're designed to be underneath your conditioning. And so the point of human design is really to decondition, to let go of all of the things that you've been told to be that go against who you actually are. And so for me as a projector, it has been a lifetime of me feeling not good enough because I'm never working hard enough. I'm not designed to work eight hour days, five days a week or 10 hour days, eight, five days a week for long periods of time, right? I'm just not designed to do that unless it's in a certain way, unless I can go with the ebbs and flows of my energy, unless I can have like a lunchtime nap, you know, like there's all these um, different little ways that my energy works. But I've grown up in a society that has told me, um, you know, you're not a worthy member of the community if you don't do that. And so the deconditioning process for projectors often, and it's not always going to be the same, right? Like you might not have this or you might be able to work, you know, a full-time job and not feel burnt out. Everyone's different. But the deconditioning process is, am I working like that? And am I doing this because I've been told that that's what a, um, a good member of society does and that's the only way to do it? Or am I doing it because it's actually aligned and who I truly am. 
So if you're just joining us, I would love to know in the comments who, um, not who, <laughs> I'd love to know in the comments what your human design um, charts are. So what is your aura type? So your aura type, your profile lines and your authority. And that will give me enough information and I can go a little bit more into depth um, around that so that the people watching the replay can see like each person, how unique each person is, right? Okay, so let's actually give you some useful information now. So that's kind of the overview. I'm sure that I've missed stuff because that's just, you know, this is what needs to happen right now. And I'm sure that there's more important, there's other important things that you probably need to know. But for right now, I just want to give you like the most important information that I feel is relevant for you to start your human design journey. So the two um, most important things are your strategy and your authority. Everything in human design comes back to your strategy and authority. So what is that? If you've done your chart on Jovian Archive and you've downloaded it as a PDF, which is always my recommendation because then you can have it saved in all different places. Um, there are other softwares out there, but I love Jovian Archive because it's kind of like a staple. It's like the base level. It's like, I don't know, it's the, the OG. It's the OG place. <laughs> um, and so you will have downloaded it as a PDF. I keep going blurry on my screen, so hopefully it's not blurry for everyone else. Um, you download it as a PDF. How many times are we going to say that? And then up the top in the boxes, it's going to say um, aura type, strategy, authority, not self theme, your incarnation cross, your profile, not in that order, but it will all be up the top there, right? The stuff in the top boxes is the most important thing. All of the shapes and that weird like picture thing with all the lines and the red and the black and all the weird things down the side, just ignore that. Just pretend that's not there. We're just going to focus up the top until you have an understanding of the top bits because they are the most important when you're first starting out, right? The bottom bit's super fascinating and super interesting and there's so many little nuances down there, but just get your strategy and authority down first. So your strategy is how your energy is best used in the world, right? So if you are a generator or a manifesting generator, so your aura type will be generator or manifesting generator, you are under the generator, the generator type, right? You have an open and enveloping aura, which means that you're kind of like inviting people in with your big aura. If you've done any energy work or learned any like, you know, energy teachings in the past, they often talk about how your aura um, expands as a big bubble around you, like, you know, however far, maybe a metre, maybe three feet, whatever. I don't know how much three feet is now that I've said that out loud. And it could be a metre. <laughs> oh, I'm too young for that. Um, most of those energy teachings are using the generator aura. They are based on the aura of the generator because 70% of the population are either generators or manifesting generators. Now, if you are a generator or manifesting generator, your strategy is to respond. So in society, all of us have been told to just do it. There's that Nike campaign, just do it. Yeah, everything's going to be fine. If you figure out what you want, then just go after it no matter what and bulldoze your way through no, 70% of us are actually meant to respond. So what does responding mean, right? It means that you are responding to the world around you and then taking action, not taking action because um, that's what you are like told to do or that's what you want. So I'm going to bulldoze my way through. If you, if when you've deconditioned um, quite a bit, you can actually feel the ickiness of that energy. You can feel the grossness when a generator or a projector or a reflector initiates, when they are bulldozing their way because they feel like that's the path that they're meant to be on rather than allowing the world to show you different paths and you using your authority, which I will get to soon, to make decisions and move in that direction, right? So allowing yourself to see that, you know, 
see a cup of coffee and then your sacral goes, oh, I'd like a cup, cup of coffee. And then you're like, I'm going to go get a cup of coffee or allowing your body to be like, I am hungry rather than you being like, it's 12 o'clock. I must eat because that's what I've been told to do. It's about responding to the world around you or responding to your body or responding to like, maybe you get invited to go for dinner and then maybe you're like, mm, don't really feel like going to dinner. So you're responding to that invitation. You're responding to the world around you rather than I want to have, I want to, I don't know another example off the top of my head. I feel like I should do that. Should is like the worst world, the worst word in the human language, in the English language. Should, if you ever hear yourself say should, please stop, stop, drop and roll <laughs> away from the shoulds. Should is the worst word in the in the English language. Oh, my gosh. I hate the word should. If you're feeling like you should do something and then you're bulldozing and pushing your way and initiating your way to it, as a generator, it's going to feel icky and likely it's going to blow up in your face. So um, as with all of these strategies, I'm going to go through the rest in a sec, but with all of the strategies, you can look back on your life and you can see where you where things haven't gone to plan or where things have really like exploded and not in a good way. And just, just look at like the events leading up to that. Were you initiating? Were you trying to make things happen because you felt like they should happen rather than allowing the world to give you something to respond to, allowing the people around you to, to give you something to respond to? Now, this doesn't mean that you just sit on your butt waiting. No one is sitting on their butt waiting, even projectors, and I'll get to projectors in a sec. It means that you're being present in the world. It means that you're doing what, what makes you feel alive, what makes you feel excited, what makes you feel like you've lost track of time. It's about finding more joy and releasing the shoulds, and you will do that when you're using your strategy and authority. So projectors. Do we have any projectors on here? I feel like we might. Um, anyway, if you're a projector, put it in the comments, put it in the chat. Projector's strategy is to, uh, first of all, projector aura type is a focused and penetrating aura. I am a projector. So right now when I'm speaking to you, you might feel like I am speaking directly to you. And this is my focused and penetrating aura. So unlike a generator, I don't have the big enveloping aura. I have a focused and penetrating aura that looks at the person that I'm talking to. Yeah, I think these are projector too. I think you've told me that, Em. Um, I'm like looking to you on soul level. And I have this ability to make you feel like I'm talking directly to you. I'm seeing you like no one has ever, no one else has ever seen you before. And all projectors have this, right? So we have a focused and penetrating aura, aura that focuses into the other and sees the other so, so deeply. Um, and to the point where sometimes I find that I don't even like register people's faces or names or like what color their hair is because I'm so like, their energy is just so strong that, that that's all I can feel. I am terrible with names and my husband is also a projector. We literally this morning had a conversation how we're terrible with names and I am, I'm not sure, but I'm 90% sure that this is why is because we are so focused and penetrating on that person's energy and their soul and like what's going on for them internally um, that like we forget that all this surface level stuff that everyone else um, like needs to exist actually is like there like we just it's not it's it's such a different experience of the world being a projector projectors are only about 20 percent of the population so we are quite rare as well there are rarer types though and I will get to them as a projector your strategy is to wait for the invitation now this is like a very misleading wordage because when you think of the word wait, you think like you should be sitting there twiddling your thumbs, just like waiting for the world to show up for you. And as I said, for generators as well, um, it's not about that. It's about learning and doing what projectors love learning, by the way. <laughs> we love learning. <laughs> um, it's about learning and doing what makes you feel good and going, following where you're drawn to and just like researching all the things and like just delving deep into all of these different rabbit holes and having fun and like play is like so important important for projectors as well and then making yourself being be seen for your gifts right like chasing not chasing following where you're being led allowing that information to really like absorb into you and like 
light you up and like make you excited and like human design does that for me I don't know if you can tell (laughs) I'm like yes fucking love human design um and then making yourself being seen so for uh, over a year now I've been posting on social media making myself being seen that I know about human design and I'm really gifted in teaching human design and I love human design and it really makes me magnetic and excited and all of these things And from that, I then receive invitations. Like to do this webinar, I was actually invited by M, who's the um, one of the founders of Juni Wellness Center, to do to do this and to share my knowledge and to like put to put this webinar together and put a course together and all of these things. Right? I was guided and invited by her because she saw me. She saw me in my genius. She saw me um, preaching my gifts (laughs) and invited me to share. And when we do that, our message lands so profoundly with the people that we're sharing it with. When we initiate, it feels like we are violating the people around us. Like, and this goes for pretty much everyone except for manifestors. But for projectors, when we're initiating and like forcing our opinions or forcing what we see on people or forcing out our energy on people or like not waiting for the invitation it's so repelling for the person on the receiving end like they are just like get the hell away from me this is disgusting energy and so I want you to remember that because often we're not aware um, that that's how we're coming across to the person on the receiving end so waiting for the invitation is not about sitting around twiddling your thumbs it's about allowing the world to invite you an invitation can take many forms Um, I'm not going to get too much into that because I don't feel like as a beginner, you need to know exactly what that is. But if you are interested, I do have a um, community, an online community specifically for projectors and empowering projectors where we can all come together, share our wisdom, be seen, be recognised, receive invitations from each other and learn about being a projector in a generator world. Um, It's called the Projector Success Hub. And that's literally, it's projectorsuccesshub.com if you want to come and join that. First, um, 50 signups are free and I've just started the community. So if you're watching this in 2023, at the beginning of 2023, chances are you'll get a free subscription. Um, If not, check it out anyway because um, the subscription is going to be super cheap. Haven't figured out how much yet. (laughs) Typical to your line. (laughs) Okay, so the next aura type is a manifester. M here is a manifester. Manifestors have a, in traditional human design language, closed and repelling aura. I really don't like that word. I just, no. It's, it makes, I feel like if I read that about myself, I would be like, oh my God, I have no friends because I'm repelling everyone. That's just not the case, right? You're just, you have a very specific energy and a very concentrated energy. And this energy is like highly, highly powerful. You are the only type and you're only about 8% of the population, but you're the only type who is here to initiate. And the way that you kind of work is just by like, this is what needs to happen. Wait, so your strategy is to inform. So you inform people, this is what I feel needs to happen. And then just like doing whatever the fuck you want. Like (laughs) you're like informing the rest of us what needs to happen and then the generators are kind of like the doers or like the people who who have the consistent energy to get things done and the projectors are kind of like guiding the generators while they're doing things but the manifestors are like the starting point of all of this and so you're here to really just like tell people what you see what you feel um you know and really just like be unapologetic about that because you're and, and the thing to remember as well is like your voice and what you see is not for everyone. But when you find the people who it is for, it is going to be monumental, the shifts that you create in the world and the impact and the ripple that you create in the world. Like M, for example, is the perfect example for this. So she is one of the founders of the Juni Wellness Center, as I just said. And the way that she like approached me about this, she was like, right, this is what I'm starting. This is what needs to happen. This is how it's going to happen. And then she just was like, Cool. And I was like, no, but I need details. <laughs> I need to know how it's going to happen so that I can guide the process. And like, so that I can be like, you know, have more, more like, I need to know more about the process. I need to know more about how it's going to happen. But she, in perfect manifest of fashion, was just like, nah, this is how it needs to happen. Okay, do it. And I was like, okay, I need to figure this out. So manifestors are like, 
you know, it's it's quite a jarring experience, I feel like, for you guys, because you live in a world and you've been conditioned by the world that you're probably too much or that you um, shouldn't speak your mind or that you, you've said too much or you're too direct or no, 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 no. It just goes on and on and on and on. And it's because you're so rare, like 8% of the population, you're rare. And not everyone is ready to hear um I, I'm just reading a comment. Not everyone is ready to hear what you have to say. Um, from Fee, hi Nicola, I wish I knew my time of birth. I've done charts with 6 a.m. and come up with manifesto, 6 p.m. manifesto projector. Yeah. So what you can do, Fee, is you can get a pendulum and um, or like something, a pendulum. You, I'm sure you would have a pendulum or like some necklace. I've used a necklace in the past with like a thing, a pendant on the end or whatever. And um, hold it and with your whole body, feel, think, project out, yes, and see what happens with the pendulum. And then do the same for no and see what happens with the pendulum. Likely one of them will either sit still or, and the other one will move, or it might circle one way for one answer and then the other way for the other answer. And then using the pendulum, you can actually figure out, like you can narrow down the time. So was I born on this date, like your birthday? Yeah, so the thing with the pendulum, so the comment says, yes, I do pendulum work in kinesiology muscle testing. So um, use a pendulum, don't use kinesiology because kinesiology is coming from your body. And so it's like, it's not, it's kind of like the way that I think about it, and this probably isn't right, but the way that I think about it is like, you're, you're kind of like projecting what you want or what what perceived ideas you have or like maybe conditioning or whatever it is when you're using muscle testing because it's coming from you. Whereas with the, pe with the pendulum, it's like the universe is telling you what you need to know. That's how I think about it. It might not be 100% correct, but for me, that's just, that's my philosophy on it. So yeah, narrow down, was I born on this date? And if it says no, then you have to figure out which date. But um, and then narrow down, like, was I born before midday? Was I born after midday? Was I born in this hour? And you need to narrow it down to the specific minute. So anyone else out there who's having the same issue, uh, that's what you can do. So manifestors, I think I'm finished with you guys. But yes, it is quite a, a powerful and, and um, interesting energy to have, like that real concentrated it's like and you you operate in pulses so it's like you're a ball of energy and like kind of like gung-ho about the things that you need to, that you know need to happen and then you're informing everyone um and then when you're off you're like really off so like really deep breaths like allow yourself to recharge and I feel like one of the things that manifestors along with projectors and reflectors um have is like that that working eight hours a day because we're just not designed to do that. We are considered non-sacrals and the sacral is where we where the consistent energy to do or to work comes from. Um, so keep that in mind as a manifester as well. And then the last energy type is a reflector. I'm just keeping an eye on the time too because I don't want to like give you so much information that you're like checking out. So the last um, type is a reflector who are, less than 1% of the population. So the chances that you're even watching this is very slim. But if you are, oh my gosh, please, can we meet? I really, I really want to like know more about you. Um, so in, send me an email. If you're a reflector, send me an email, please, and introduce yourself. And I, I would love to like do a reading with you or, you know, just like hang out a little bit and figure out, you know, find out more about you because you are literally a unicorn and like so fascinating and so so needed in society as well. Reflectors, um, you are just so fascinating to me. Um, your strategy and authority actually is the lunar cycle. And so you're literally like you operate on a 30-day or, you know, a lunar cycle. So when you're um, finding things to like, you know, make decisions about, especially big decisions, you're going to want to wait for the entire lunar cycle to go through because each part of the lunar cycle is illuminating a different aspect or a different part of the decision that you're making. And you as a human are like so receptive and you take in so much information that um, you also are 
changing throughout the lunar cycle. So, so your decision really needs to be thought, not thought out, but like, you know, explored over that entire lunar cycle to really, and maybe multiple lunar cycles if it's a big decision, um, to really like come to a good a good understanding or a good decision or a sustainable decision for you. Um, but yeah, you're basically here to like reflect back to the world, what you feel and what you see and how you, how you're experiencing a situation or the world or that person or whatever. You are like the feedback loop that we all require to make things better and to make the world go around. So thank you for being you. I know that that's like a super short, you know, overview of it. There's so much um, in depth, um knowledge and like so much in depth nuances to your chart um but because you're such a small portion of the population um and also it's like so unique I would love to just like have a separate space for I, and I know that there are separate spaces run by reflectors in the human design community and I feel like rather than me as a projector trying to explain the reflectiveness to you which is so like you know out of my experience I would really recommend going to find a reflector space or doing a one-on-one -on -one reading because the nuances of your chart are like very potent, I feel, more so than the rest of us because we have like more consistency, whereas the, the unique little bits in your chart are like more prominent for you because they're so much more powerful because you're so like open and, you know, receptive and taking in. So that's my advice for reflectors. So if you are a reflector, you actually don't have, like that is your strategy and authority. So you don't have two separate ones. Um, so yeah, lunar cycle for you guys is key. Key, key, key. So that is kind of like how you best move through the world. Your strategy is like how your energy works best and how you like work best in the world in relation to other people, in relation to other energies, in relation to situations, right? So how do we know what is right for us and what is wrong for us and which direction to move in? So once we've received the invitation or received something to respond to, or once you've had that pulse of like that you need to initiate if you're a manifester, um, how can you decide if that's worth your initiation or your response or like which direction you should go in or if you should respond to the invitation with a yes or a no? Um, this is your authority. Now, you're going to have one of many authorities. So you can either have a sacral authority, an emotional authority, splenic authority, ego authority, mental, you might be a mental projector or a self-projected authority or the lunar cycle, which I've already touched on. Um, the most common one is the one that I have, which is a emotional authority. Um, the emotional authority is really interesting and I actually, when I first found out I had this and I feel like it would be the same for many emotionals, is like I didn't actually know that that I was having this many emotions because as a society, like especially in Western society, like emotions are so, they're so like complex in terms of like so many people are still suppressing emotions still it's too much for them to see you having emotions it's too much for them to experience your emotions and so a lot of emotions are shut down um the emotional authority is actually mean it means that you have an emotional wave that you're constantly on an up down emotional wave cycle now your emotional wave might not be like this it might be a ratchet up and then a big crash like mine it could be pretty stable and then you spike up and then you come back and then you spike down and then like very you know um sporadic my husband has that one um and then the other one is like quite a you know an evenish kind of wave compared to the rest of us and so and the way that you can find that out is go into my free human design with Nicola Facebook group and I have a, a picture in there in the guide section and it explains the emotional authority um, in there. Wait, do I have that or did I just explain it? I think I explained it in the video on the emotional authority. Anyway, you or you can look up online um, emotional, the, emo, the three emotional waves, human design. That should get you a pretty good diagram to figure out which one you have. Um, but anyway, if you don't want to do that, you can just like work on the basic knowledge that you're constantly evol um, shifting and evolving and moving emotionally. And so 
If you are receiving, so let's use me as an example, I need to receive an invitation and then use my emotional authority to decide if that invitation is right for me or wrong for me. Now, if I receive the invitation and I'm at the top of my emotional wave and I'm like, yeah, hi on life, everything's exciting, so hopeful, like, oh, my God, life is just incredible, everything's going to plan, I'm never going to fail in my life, oh, my God, the sun's shining, the rainbows are out, I'm seeing unicorns, like... <laughs> It's utopia. Um, <laughs> and I respond in the moment and I'm at the top of my emotional wave. Like at some point, I'm going to come crashing down. <laughs> I'm going to come down and everything's going to suck and I'm going to feel really pain. Like the emotional wave goes from hope to pain to hope to pain to hope to pain over and over and over again and all the things in between. And I'm not going to want to see anyone because I have a two line. I'm a hermit. I'm going to be like, no, nah, screw this. But because I've responded, yes, I want to go for coffee. When I was at the top of my emotion, I want to go for coffee tomorrow and I was at the top of my emotional wave and then tomorrow comes and I'm like down here, I'm going to be like, why the hell would I say yes to that? That was so stupid, you know, and vice versa. If I've received an invitation and I'm like down here and I don't want to see anyone and life just sucks <laughs> and I say no and then I get to the top, I'm like, damn, I really want to have coffee now. Um, and so the trick is, and coffee's not a good example, right? Um, going out for coffee is not a good example. This is like you can respond in the moment, especially if you have a sacral or splenic definition. So if you're a generator or manifesting generator, you do have an in the moment knowing. Um, and the splenic, I won't even touch on that in this basic thing. But there are there are people out there with an emotional authority who do have an in the moment response. I'm not one of them. <laughs> um, and so for the big decisions, when you have an emotional authority, you really need to be riding those waves. They say that like three days is like the minimum that we should be riding our emotional waves to make decisions. I've been trialing this out, testing it out for many years now. And for some decisions, I need months. For some decisions, like I don't know what's right for me for months. Um, and that's okay. And I always make a really good decision when I wait out that emotional wave. And I have so much clarity when I do that. But when I respond in the moment, it almost always um, backfires, especially for a big decision. Like I'm almost always like bitter, which is my not self theme um, when I do that. So I know, and I would really urge you to look into where you feel like you are at in your emotional wave. Um, and I know how to, I know where I'm at in my emotional wave most of the time because I've like really delved into it. Um, and then using that and waiting three days to make a decision and really utilizing the ups and the downs to have more clarity. Yours might not be three days. You might have one day, you might have a week, whatever. And the only way you're going to know that is just by trialing and erroring and failing and succeeding. <laughs> um, you know, there's no like, you know, one thing because also it can change like as you decondition more it might get it might get smaller like the time frame might get smaller um and when you first start it might be large so that's the emotional authority sacral authority if you are a generator or a manifesting generator you will likely have a sacral or an emotional authority either way you have access to this energy but as i said if you're a generator or manifesting generator with an emotional authority for the big decisions, use your emotional wave and your emotional authority. For the little decisions, you can use this same technique. I'm going to teach the sacrals right now. So for a sacral authority or if you're a generator or manifesting generator, um, if you can utilize the sacral area of your body, which is about five centimeters below your belly button. So right now, if all the sacrals out there want to just put their hands on their sacral area and really just like feel into what what that feels like. Now, the sacral authority responds within one breath with a yes or no answer, but it does not know English. So it responds with either mm hmm or mm hmm. So mm hmm is yes, mm hmm is no. It could be an mm or an ooh or like noises. It responds with noises basically. Or and or, I should say, like it can be and, and or it could be or. It responds with movement. So you could move towards the thing or away from the thing. And keep in mind, this happens within a breath. If it takes longer than a breath, your mind is taken over and you're overthinking it. So you need very specific yes or no questions. So putting your hands on your sacral and closing your mouth and maybe even closing your eyes. I'm going to ask you some very specific uh, yes or no questions. 
So did you have a coffee this morning? And allow your body to say, mm -hmm, or mm. and um, do you like chocolate? It could be a mm -hmm or an mm -mm. And if it takes longer than a breath, start again. Now, if that was not a mm -hmm or an mm -mm, then the reason for that could be it's not a very specific question. It's a shit question. <laughs> it's a crap question for a sacral. The reason for that is because you could have had a response like mm, or, or a no response, which means like I don't, I don't have a response because it's not a good question, basically. My question sucked and there's a reason for that because I want to show to you why it sucked. You might love Cadbury dark chocolate but hate chocolate with mint in it or hate rum and raisin or white chocolate just makes you want to vom, right? So me asking a generic question, do you like chocolate, is actually very flawed. And your sacral might not be able to give you a yes or no response because you might like some chocolate and not the other chocolate. So a better question would be, do you like white chocolate? Mm-hmm or mm, mm And an even better question would be, narrowing it down to the brand because like maybe you like some brands but not other brands right so you get the point it needs to be a specific yes or no question so if someone was to ask you hey do you want to hey it's so nice to see you do you want to go out for dinner tomorrow night within a breath you should be going mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. you should know whether you want that right um and again I'm saying should and I just caught myself saying should if you don't that's okay right you there might be a yes but or a no but like there could be other nuances and then it's up to you to really figure that out and you can figure that out by asking yourself yes or no questions do I want to go because I like this person do I want to go because I like the food they've offered me do I want to go because um it feels good or do I not want to go because the time doesn't suit me like why like you can use your yes or no like allow your body to tell you yes or no with specific questions until you get to the final answer. Again, don't let your mind take over. Now, the trick with the sacral um, is that you might not like the answer that your body gives you. Your brain and your mind might not like the answer that your body gives you. So really practice being true to your sacral and see what happens. And notice when you go against your sacral and see what happens, like does it blow up in your face? <laughs> um, like my emotional authority when I don't honor my emotional authority, something always goes wrong. Um, so yes. Okay. So they are the two biggest authorities. So let's go through the other ones. You, first, you have the splenic authority. You're going to have this authority if you are a manifester or a projector. The spleen is the triangle. No, I'm not going to tell you where it is. It doesn't matter where it is. The splenic authority just has like a knowing, an inner knowing. You don't know why you know, but you just know. And you can't explain why. So if someone asks you to do something and you're like, no, my, my whole body is telling me no. And they're like, well, why? And you can't explain it. That's perfect. Go with the no. Don't try and like, you know, feel bad for honoring your splenic intuition, right? It's a very intuitive center. It's a very intuitive um, feeling. I've heard that it's, I don't have any definition in my spleen. So I literally have no concept of what a splenic response would even feel like in my body. No idea at all. But from what I understand mentally, um, <laughs> it's like a, well, from my understanding of it and the way that I perceive it, which could be completely wrong, but the way that I perceive it is like it's like a, a current that kind of goes through your body in the moment. It's a very in the moment thing. And it's like a your whole body just like, not maybe not your whole body, but you just have like this this real like ping of like knowing or not no of of yes or no, or like knowing or um you know, understanding. It's a very intuitive thing. And um, it's, it's in the moment. It's very strong. It's very, um, or it might not be strong if you've been disconnected from it. But like, for me, as someone who picks up on other people's splenic stuff, um, it feels very strong in my body, but that also could be because I'm not used to it. So it's in the moment. It's very intuitive. You can't explain why, you know, you just know your challenge is to honor that. Splenic, done. The next one is self-projected um, projector. If you are a self-projected projector, you just, or like maybe you're, you're a self-projected, I think you can be a self-projected manifester as well. Um, if you have a self-projected authority, 
you need to speak in an environment that feels neutral and receptive. So you need to speak to hear yourself talking to gain clarity. So you need to talk or like express yourself in a way that you can then hear it back and like receive it back is like, a, it's kind of like you have to loop it out to come back in to hear it. Um, whereas when you're not doing that, I have a friend who's a self-projected projector and we literally had a conversation about this the other day um, about like how when she doesn't speak about things and like hear herself speak, it's just like messy inside of her. Like she can't get clarity. It's like so hard. And I was like, yeah, because you got to speak. Like you got to, you got to hear yourself. You got to hear the clarity come back to you. Um, but the trick is not being in a, and this goes for all of the remaining authorities. Like if you're a mental projector or an ego projector or, a, um, yeah, any of those um, smaller, they're all like quite rare. But if you're any of those, if you have any of those authorities, um, this is, goes for all of them. You need to be in an environment where you're not being like suppressed or like where your views or your expressions or the way that you are is like being condemned or, you know, where you're being shut down or whatever. It needs to be in an environment where the other person or people are just able to listen to you um, neutrally or like supportively, right? Um, because when you're in an environment where that doesn't feel the case, it's like kind of muddles the, the feedback that you're getting back from yourself because you're like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's like you're you're speaking, but it's kind of getting like um, what's the word um, deconcentrated? Like it's not as concentrated and not as clear as when you receive it back because of the energy that you're in. So if you have a self-projected um, authority, speak. I listen back to myself. Yeah, many people with a defined throat will also have um, this kind of thing well I have it too where I like need to and projectors as well projectors also need to hear them speak to hear themselves speak to um to really like get the clarity I'm just going to read you this comment that Em's just put up um I think I have that as a manifester I listen back to my stuff and get the message that way because it always just feels like word vom and channeled info and I'm not even there or present when I when I present or teach yeah um, I have a little bit of the same, like sometimes I'll re-listen to my content and I'm like, oh God, that was so wise. <laughs> Why didn't I think that before? But obviously I did think it before because it came out of my mouth and I'm like, oh, I just got the message that I've given because I've heard myself say it back. So yes, it's a thing. It's definitely a thing. You're not crazy. Um, but yes, self-projected projectors, definitely this is like key for you. Speaking in a neutral or supportive environment where people are happy to just listen and like give little bits of feedback, but you have the freedom to speak. Now, if you are an ego, um, an ego authority, it's very similar, but um, in these little authorities, i.e. the ego and the mental projector and the self-projected um, authority are like quite similar. And the nuances of the nuances and differences of them, I like, I'm still very much trying to understand because I've never had a lived experience of it. So an ego projector, an ego, yeah, ego authority is, and you might be a projector, but I think you can also be a manifester with this authority, um, is very much like the same as a self-projected, except for I think it's less about like speaking and hearing yourself come back. It's more about the environment and the way that you express yourself in the environment and how that makes you feel and how um and how it's like a not feel but like an internal like knowing um and it's a very like very nuanced but I feel like if you had this authority it wouldn't feel nuanced but for me as someone who's never had it, it does feel very nuanced um and so it's more about like how how you how that feels in your body and how it kind of like um is reflected back to you in a way. I feel like that wasn't very clear. I have a very good video on this in my Human Design with Nicola free Facebook group. Um, so go and check that out. I actually like went into all of the nuances, whereas in this one, it's very basic and overview. So um, I'm like not prepared to go into the nuances because <laughs> I didn't research them again. Rookie. Um, and then a mental projector is the last one. A mental projector is. Um, 
no one in human design is designed designed to make um, decisions mentally, but a mental projector only has definition in their head and ajna and I don't even think they have a defined throat. And so for you, it's really like that's the only way that you consistently express and consistently um, experience the world. Like everything else is like ebbs and flows, right? And so for you, um, this is, again, about the environment and about how you express yourself in the environment and how that makes your body feel not emotionally but just like physically and like energetically same for an ego projector it's not about the emotional feeling that you get but it's like the body feeling that you get and the energetic feeling that you get and like this might feel very far-fetched for you if you have these and you've never like done any energy work or never been in the personal development space so just like take what that means for you and just like notice and try not to do like too much with this if you have these minor little authority, the smaller percentage, I shouldn't call them little authorities because they're definitely the same potency as everyone else, but like a smaller percentage of the population has them. Like very, they're very rare. You have to understand this. If you have these, you're like a unicorn. Um, and so, yeah, it's like take it and try not, don't try to do anything with it, but just notice notice how it's playing out in your life already because most likely it will be and then once you've noticed and like seen like oh maybe this is what Nicola was talking about then try and back like try and expand on that right so give it a week or so and allow it to just like be noticed and then after that you can try or like manipulate it a little bit and see what happens when you lean into it or when you lean out of it but yes, it's very much about the environment. You need to be in an environment where you can express yourself without any, um, you know, infiltration or anything that's like going to suppress you or make you feel like you're a nuisance. Um, and really just like hearing yourself, noticing yourself and like um, notice how your body is talking to you in each moment. Um, oh, I feel like I've botched those, botched, I feel like I've bodged those last few um, authorities. So definitely check out my free Facebook group with those authorities in there um, because I definitely did a much better job explaining it in there. It's in the guide section. The human, it's, the Facebook group is called Human Design with Nicola. So that is your strategies and authorities. I Thank you for bearing with me through that. Like we've been on for like an hour now um, and it's a long, it, there's a lot and it's a lot of information. So make sure that like, first of all, you're, you're focusing on your chart and your strategy and authority. And then afterwards, especially if you're a projector, you definitely want to go, you're going to want to go and research everyone else's around you because we are so focused on the other rather than ourselves. Um, <laughs> I looked up everyone I've ever known um, basically in the first few months of knowing human design. But um, make sure that you're learning about yourself first so that you can like really notice yourself before like diving into everyone else's. And you can come back to this. This will be um, recorded and put on my website. You can come back to this anytime and re-watch it. Um, and you know get all this information but also there is different and more information in my free Facebook group Human Design with Nicola. Now the other thing that is coming up is in two weeks or 10 days on the 14th of January 2023 and if you're here much later than that it will be recorded and um, put up as a self-study on my website. I'm going to be running a six-week course i.e. a six-part course um, on the basics of human design and it will go into more detail about all of the things up the top of your chart and it will touch on i.e like your like your profile your authority your strategy your aura type I'm going to go into more depth and in, in all of those things um, and your definition so you will either have a split a single definition split definition triple split definition or quadruple split definition in the top of your chart if you've done it on Jovian archive so all of these things that might not make sense right now when you first done it I'm going to be explaining it all <laughs> explaining all the top stuff and then diving a little bit into the bottom stuff as well so if you would like to join me on in that course it's um 150 australian i also am going to be giving people a free um a new offering for free that i'm currently working on at the moment which is called the breakdown and it is a pdf um document with like 
the nuances and like the explanation and the breaking down of all of the parts of your chart, the basic parts of your chart in a PDF document, which is easy to access. Um, and it's going to have different information than what I've explored on here. And also probably what I'm going to explore in the course, but you'll get a free, um, a free one of those with the course as well. Um, and that that's going to be forever. Like if you ever sign up for this course, unless it's like stated somewhere and I've changed my mind in a little bit, which happens when you have an emotional authority. Um, I love that you're cheering me on, Em. Thank you. Um, <laughs> but yes, you're going to be getting a free version of that as well when you sign up for the course. So um, I actually think that this will be one of my best courses and I'm really, really excited to teach it. I've taught like a lot of this basic stuff before. And again, like a lot of that um, and different stuff as well is going is in the free Facebook group. But like if you want to go deeper and you want to like learn in a little container and like have, you know, um, paid access to me, which is often much more potent. And the energy that I bring to those courses and those containers are often very transformational. Um, in the past, I've like had lots of massive breakthroughs with many of my clients. Um, then yes, I would love to have you join me there. This is an open invitation and I'm inviting especially all of my projectors out there. Everyone, of course, is invited, but because projectors need an invitation, this is your invitation. If you're a generator, this is something that you can respond to. Use your authority to make this decision. Um, if you're a manifester, like probably you already know if you're interested or not, but use your authority. And also I find with manifestors, like if you're not really into something, you're just like, yeah, whatever. But if you are into something, you're going to be like, I'm going to go and learn this and then do it my own way. <laughs> and I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. So if that feels like it's something that is on your path as a manifester um, and you feel like it can contribute to your unique and um, unusual way of doing things, i.e. like you're not really here to like regurgitate what everyone else says, but maybe the course would be something that allows you to have more information so that then you can create your own little, um, you know, action. You can inform people to take the action on whatever it is that you're doing in your life. If you feel like this would help, I would love to also have you there. Um, and if you're a reflector, please come. I would love to learn more from you and um, be present with you in this way. Um so what else do I need to say about that? I will put the link. I will actually just chuck the link in the little chat here if you're with me live. If you're not with me live, it will be on the page that you're watching this replay on on my website. But if you want to look it up, it'll be nicolaburbage.com. Um, actually, you can just go to courses on my website and it'll be there. But, um, yeah, I'll just put the courses thing there because that'll be easier than typing out the whole um <laughs> the whole web address it's a lot it's a big one so it's gonna be easier to do it that way cool that is all I have for you do I have anything else to say no that's all I have to say uh that's all I have to share with you today and yeah thank you for being here I hope that this was helpful um Thank you for joining me live, you guys, and thank you for watching the replay. As always, I would love to hear from you. I would love any feedback. Um, if you have anything that you would like to um, learn about or you would like me to share more on, please let me know so I can do more of these masterclasses and I know what you guys need and what you guys want from me. If you're a projector, come and join the Projector Success Hub. I do a lot more projector-specific content in there. I'm about to do a live on um, what even is an invitation, and I'm, I've already done one on redefining success, and I'm going to do one on bitterness being a, um, a great tool for redirection. Um, so, yeah, lots of fun wisdom being shared in there, and the people in there are incredible. So I'd love to have you come and join me there. As I said, first 50 signups are free, so come join. And, yeah. I love you all and I will see you guys when I see you. Bye.